We're back in Firelink. I spared you the climb up through Blight Town, but it was uneventful. And Lautrec killed Anastasia. I actually intended to kill Lautrec beforehand, but then I forgot about it. But it's not a bad idea to let her die. The reason for that is, although it's inconvenient not having the Firelink bonfire, her dingy equipment set is actually surprisingly good. Uh, for light, poiseless armor, it's got a remarkable amount of, uh, of defense. And it's pretty light. So in fact, I'll just wear this for a little bit. Get a shawl look going on. Uh, the dingy set is actually a black version of a different uh, armor set that is relatively similar in appearance, um, but is white in color. That one can't be gotten until much later. So where are we off to? Pretty much the last place you can quote-unquote sequence break here that I want to show off, which is the catacombs. Now, it's not exactly sequence breaking, in the sense that you weren't supposed to go to the catacombs or anything. You could just run right in here at the beginning of the game. And some people assume that it's one of the first places that they have to go, and then have so much trouble with the skeletons that, it, that they wonder, you know, what the deal is. You don't have to come down here early, but it can be cool to do so. There's a couple of things to find, but it's not the safest or uh, most inviting place, due to a number of gimmicks. One is that skeletons can be difficult to damage. Uh, they don't have much health, they're actually pretty weak enemies, but they're hard to do damage to. Um, even this uh, plus four enchanted uh, longsword doesn't do a whole lot of damage to that skeleton. It'll kill him in two hits, but two hits is a bit uh, surprising, and if you're using a uh, starter weapon, that's going to be more than two hits by quite a bit. The other gimmick is that these uh, skeletons regenerate uh, if they're killed, unless you kill the necromancer that's summoning them. Those guys uh, shoot a pretty powerful boss of fire there. They don't have much health and they don't respawn, but they do quite a lot of damage. Now, we'll pop this bonfire, because the last time we saved the bonfire was Blight Town. This is pretty much the closest one to uh, Fire Link, if the Fire Link uh, thing is out. Had to do a little work there. What you do is you pop that switch, and uh, that switch next to the bonfire. That'll open the next area of the catacombs. I've gone ahead and switched to a more uh, fight-capable uh, setup here. We're going to go out and fight some skeletons. Now, one of the gimmicks of the catacombs, uh, other than the skeletons and necromancers, as if it needed one, is that these bridges can actually rotate, and until you rotate them back into position, they don't, do, uh, don't allow you access. I don't know if it's possible to get stuck in this area, because there are a number of shortcuts you can take that don't require you to actually lower these bridges, but I wouldn't want to chance it, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. As I'll show in a moment, uh, it's entirely possible to get through this area in a matter of seconds, and that's not an exaggeration. Uh, from the bonfire down to the boss uh, is less than 30 seconds if you rush it. It sounds crazy, but as long as you know where you're going, it's no problem. So what is the rest of this area? Well, it's a lot of treasure, a lot of skeletons, a lot of necromancers, and a few useful neat uh, oddities and tricks. The main thing is, uh, if you have a divine weapon, which is uh, anything with the divine uh, prefix, or uh, certain weapons that, if you look on their status screen, they have a white circle uh, and a number greater than 100 next to it, those are divine weapons. A good example of that is the Astora Straight Sword that the Dragon Corpse has in the Valley of Drakes. It does take 14 faith to use, so if you're not planning a faith build, you might not want to put the stats in to use it. But if you are like a cleric to start, or you have a faith build that you're planning, uh, this can be a great weapon to start with. It'll kill these skeletons very quickly, and they won't revive even if the Necromancer is still alive. It's one of the effects of a divine weapon. However, if the Necromancer is dead, they won't respawn either. And since the Necromancers don't respawn themselves, uh, it can be a lot easier to just go ahead and kill them that way. Now this Necromancer can glitch out in the PC version. He can actually walk himself off the cliff, but unfortunately since he's spotted us, he doesn't want to do that. We're going to have to deal with him some other way. Ah yes, poison arrows. These are quite cheap. You use two or three of these on somebody. Almost anything that's not immune to poison will take poison damage. It'll do several hundred points of poison damage, uh, enough that it would kill this necromancer 
But as you can see, it's ticking for about three a second, so it's going to take quite a while for that to work. Still, he's pretty much guaranteed to die at this point, so we'll just continue on. You also notice I've removed the dust crown because I don't want to take too much magic damage from anything. Those head explosions, I believe, are magic damage, that sort of thing. So you can see the necromancer still slowly taking his health away. We've also opened the bridge, so he'll now be able to walk out closer towards us. That is, of course, assuming we actually get back to where he is before he dies to poison. He's decided to walk back into the cave. We can track his location with his health bar. So another neat thing about poison is anything that's struck with poison, you can continue to see their health bar through pretty much anything. So I know exactly where he is. I know he's walking back out on the bridge towards us. Oop! Interrupted by skeletons. These guys are reviving. Uh, they're tied to the necromancer who's poisoned right now. So as long as he's alive, which he still is, regrettably, these guys are going to reconstitute and keep fighting us. And there's nothing you can do about this other than kill the necromancer or use a divine weapon. These guys will just keep coming. Really, though, they're not that much of a threat. If you can kill them before, you can keep killing them now. The problem is that uh, if you get caught up in it or you get swarmed, that can be pretty dangerous. So that's one reason why people really recommend getting a divine weapon. The other thing is that weapons that do divine damage uh, will also do additional damage to skeletons. It's just a property of divine weapons. Necromancer's dead now, so we won't have to worry about them reviving anymore. Nor these guys, I believe, are tied to the same one. Now, these skeletons are very easy to kick off. Uh, they'll even fall off. However, they won't die. Um, the bottom of this area is not bottomless. Uh, it's pretty close to the boss area. So if you uh, knock the skeletons off, they will still be alive when you get down there. If you drop off the bridge here, there's a door that's blocked by a switch. And if you go this other way, you'll get to this area, which is the second bonfire and the final bridge rotator. The second bonfire is through an illusionary wall here. I never use it, uh, simply because I want to make sure I can warp back up to the top of the catacombs. But it's not so bad. There are actually a couple of shortcuts in the catacombs that can take you back up to the top. Sometimes uh, an NPC is here, Patches. I'm not sure why he isn't, because uh, he shouldn't have moved down to the Tomb of the Giants, the next area, uh, just yet. But for some reason, I've had a lot of trouble seeing him in the catacombs. C Patches is annoying because uh, he will actually re-rotate the bridge, uh, just kind of to annoy you, as long as he's standing by the switch. So you either need to kill him or just pass through the area. And we'll fall down on this other necromancer. I actually missed an item by doing that, but I will have to go back and get it. It's that glowy right there. But there's another switch here. Now this one doesn't rotate a bridge. It actually creates a secret area. But that's not where we want to go. What we want to do is go down to this apparently bottomless shaft, and then we want to walk off here. And somehow I managed to screw this up. Whoop! And dead. However, it's normally safe to do that. Don't roll. Um, rolling is bad. Rolling will actually take you past it. Just run off like that. Then do it again for this other one. This one hopefully has a body on it with the green shard, which is useful because what we're about to do when we get down here is meet the blacksmith. That's Vamos. He's the final blacksmith. He's a skeleton guy, using the coffins as his forging equipment. And he will uh, do uh, fire forges. So we can give him the large fire emblem and the chaos emblem, and he'll use both of these. Now here's an interesting thing. In Vamos' dialogue, he mentions an ember that he'd like from New Londo, and when you give him the large flame em ember, he again says it's from New Londo. But as I, as I described, um, it's from the Demon Ruins. The one that's from New Londo is actually the uh, very large ember. So the only thing I can conclude here is that uh, at some point during development, 
Uh, the large flame ember was supposed to be in New Londo, and the very large ember, I guess, would have been in that chest down in the demon ruins, or possibly somewhere else. Uh, it's hard to say. Now, we can do the same trick here. If we have green titanite uh, shards, we can uh, make a fire claymore, put it up to plus five, and then using that red chunk that we got from uh, the black knight down in there, we can make a chaos claymore or a fire claymore plus six. Um, the difference between taking fire to plus ten and taking chaos to plus five, uh, fire is more balanced uh, in terms of its physical magical split, um, but it doesn't scale in any way. Chaos has lower physical damage, uh, slightly higher fire damage, but what's interesting about it is that it has, you can see, it has scaling. Now what it actually scales with is humanity. Uh, if you have up to about 11 liquid humanity, that is up in the big number up there on the left, it will be better in most respects than a fire uh, thing boosted, but I don't really like my chances with that. So what I'll do is warp back up to the top here uh, with my new fire claymore plus six. And it may be a little underwhelming, but that's because it's only a plus six. If I had more red chunks, which are unfortunately hard to get early in the game, it would be considerably stronger. Unfortunately, there's only the two that I know of in the uh, asylum, and I think there's one you can trade with the crow for. So that's really only about enough to get it up to plus two or so. Not that, uh, or well, I guess if it were fire, it would be plus seven. Not too helpful. Still, uh, fire weapons are pretty great. What's great about fire weapons is that overall, uh, the least resisted damage type in the entire game uh, tends to be fire. A huge number of regular enemies and slightly fewer bosses uh, have a tendency to be uh, weak to fire. Now what I've done is gone up to that first thing, looked down, and rolled off onto this thing. And the only reason that little protrusion even seems to exist is for shortcutting. You can actually jump down here. Oop. Exploding head killed him for me. You can actually jump down here. And you'll be uh, near an area where you can go and uh, join the Gravelord Covenant. You can go inside uh, that cavern area. There's a Titanite Demon. You kill him, there's some Eyes of Death on a body in the back. And there's a coffin in that same hallway uh, that you can climb into. As long as you have an Eye of Death, you can go in there and uh, go to Nito's uh, Covenant. Which, Nito is a boss, but he's also a Covenant Master. Uh, the nice thing about this is that if you run to that area early in the game using that roll shortcut, uh, what you can actually end up doing is join the Gravelord Servant Covenant at the very beginning of the game. One of the rewards you get for actually joining is the Gravelord Sword, which is a curved greatsword. It has kind of weird requirements. You need a, a decent amount of dex and at least 16 strength to two-hand it. Um, it can be an okay weapon. I think the Drake Sword is better just because it's more versatile and uh, has lower requirements. But, you know, it, it's up to you whether you want to use the Gravelord Sword. Now these skeletons, not the ones here, but the ones with the bone wheels, are extremely dangerous. You saw how much health they did just comboing me like that. If you have low poise or a poor shield, they will rip you apart. So I would recommend just running to this boss fog, because we don't intend to stay down here long. I'll use a humanity to heal instead of uh, an Estus flask. Those are precious, although as we're about to see, we won't need them. What we are about to do is fight pretty much the weakest boss in the entire game. And yes, uh, Taurus Demon is the first boss, or even the Asylum Demon, but believe it or not, those guys are pretty much easier than this guy. This guy is Pinwheel, and he's roundly mocked in the uh, Souls community for good reason. He's just a ridiculous boss. His gimmick is that he casts spells at you, he'll also clone himself like the Fool's Idol in uh, Demon Souls. The problem is, the clones seem to kill themselves or just die on their own, they'll also die in one hit. And then Pinwheel, that was that was the real Pinwheel. He's already dead. You just run up to him and hit him. It's ridiculously easy. For beating Pinwheel, you'll get the Rite of Kindling, which lets you kindle a bonfire up to plus four, so that can be helpful to do earlier in the game. You'll also get one of three masks. The Mask of the Mother, the Mask of the Child, or the Mask of the Father. I happen to get the Mask of the Mother. Each of these provides an interesting stat bonus. Uh, sometimes they're preferred for that, because uh, they're lightweight, but they do look kind of ugly. The Mask of the Mother raises your max uh, HP by about, I think, 5%. Used to be much more, I think about 15%, but that was nerfed. The Mask of the Father raises your equip burden, uh, again, by about 5%. And the Mask of the Child functions like the Grass Crest Shield or Chloranthi Ring. You only get one of the masks, and which one Pinwheel gives you is random. 
And what we're doing here is using the Cast Light spell. The next area past Pinwheel is the Tomb of the Giants. This is another one of those uh, later game areas. However, unlike a lot of later game areas, nothing prevents you from going in here. There is a Gold Fog Door on the way to Nido, so you can't fight him right away. But, you can go down here, right after fighting Pinwheel. It's very dangerous. There's these giant skeletons, it's extremely dark, and you might wonder, well, what in the world could we possibly want down here? And really, there's only one thing, and it's very silly, but I just wanted it for fun. There's probably much easier ways to do it. The goal here is you want to walk down these coffins, and you got a lot of these skeletons in the darkness that you can see the eyes of. There's another one over here somewhere. You can't drop down off here because it'll ramp you off and into the abyss there. But you can slide down here. Now you can see that area behind us, the one that's illuminated in the red area. That's actually the uh, area I was talking about earlier, uh, the demon ruins. Unfortunately, I got chain kicked here. What's interesting is I fell onto this area there. Uh, that's actually an area you can get to. Uh, I believe there's uh, another ember in there, the large divine ember. However, that area is extremely hard to get through uh, with the kind of gear and equipment we have right now. There's about eight large skeletons, and while there are ways to cheese them, because you can kind of get on a ledge above them, it's not recommended. So I'll just work my way back down here. Again, it's pretty easy. If you can get to Pinwheel, you can get right back to this area. Just don't save down here, or you will have a hell of a time getting back out. We'll try the Fire Claymore. It works pretty well on Undead. If this were at a plus 10 or a Chaos plus 5, it would really be carving these guys up. But, unfortunately, the lack of red chunks and red slabs makes that really difficult. Now, Cast Light is not the only thing that you can use to get down here. There's a helmet that you can get later in the game that creates light. Uh, and there's a, an item that you can equip that also creates light. We could have picked it up from the Necromancers if they'd been kind enough to drop it on the way down. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't, they didn't for me, so that's rather a problem. However, there's a free one you can get. Unfortunately, the free one you can get is down here in the Tomb of the Giants. So you're either going to have to bring Cast Light or go quite a ways in the dark. Uh, I tried to see how much damage I could actually deal to this guy. See if I could kill him from a distance. He ended up really spazzing out there. Just going crazy in the dark. You can still see him, and I can still hit him, but it would be a huge waste of arrows. And it looks like he's poison immune, which you would figure of a skeleton. So this guy's going to be too much of a pain. Wow, the large arrows do almost no damage to him. So, we'll just have to take him out the normal way. We're also being shot at by large skeleton archers. Again, that lower area that I got kicked down onto, there's a number of those tombs that you can climb into for some loot. They have a number of those large archers. They're kind of dangerous just because of the sheer damage that they can do. These large skeletons are not that hard if you have poise. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of it just because of the circumstances here. Those are pretty big arrows. However, they're not actually uh, great arrows. Uh, they're just scaled up to the model of the, the bowman. There are great arrows and great bows in this game, and you'll know when you see them, because they'll hit you and knock you back and knock you down. There's a bonfire this way. Again, don't touch this bonfire until much later. If you have the ability to warp later in the game, that's a warpable bonfire in the PC version. You don't want to mess with it now, though. Are you a cleric or something? We run into patches down here, and the main thing is you want to make sure you don't say that you're a cleric. He'll ask this uh, the first time he meets you, one way or another. You want to make absolutely sure you say no, because if you say yes, uh, at some point he will attack you. Since he is uh, eventually a merchant, you don't want to do that. Anyway, we'll have to fall for his rather obvious trap, especially obvious if you've played Demon Souls, where he pulls exactly the same trick. I'll equip some humanities because I'm out of Estus. And we'll get kicked down in the pit. We gotta be careful here because remember one of those giant skeletons fell down here and he is definitely not dead. But in the meantime, we'll grab some souls and... There he is. Again, the claymore used to be so fast that it could stunlock those guys with the two-hander. Can't do that now. 
Skull Lantern. This is basically an offhand item. It works like a shield, although it has very terrible protection, and it can illuminate areas. That's not why I want it, though. Down here we also find Rhea. If you are a Faith character, it could be to your advantage to go ahead and go down here for her. She is the basically the advanced Miracles trainer. She teaches a bunch of uh, spells that Petrus can't, like Wrath of God. All very useful. So we'll pop power within, and we need to kill her hollow companions. If you kill them, talk to her, she'll give you a miracle, and then she'll move back up into the undead parish. You can buy from her there. Her allies are quite strong, but they have fairly predictable patterns. The one thing to look out for is that the uh, guy without the helmet, he'll cast that, uh, I don't know if it's Wrath of God or just Force, but it'll knock you down. It can be a pain. It's blockable, though, so that's probably what you should do. You'll also know if he intends to cast it, because he'll put his mace away to pull out his, uh, his catalyst, or his, uh, talisman. Oh, 666. Quite a, quite a thing to backstab. As you can see, humanities actually are not bad healing items. But, obviously, you have to ask whether you want to save your humanities, or if you want to use them, because if you die twice, you can kiss those five liquid humanity goodbye. So we will rescue Rhea. She'll give us a miracle, and she'll head back to Firelink. Now, our cath light is worn off, you can see how absolutely dark this place is without it. This is an area we don't want to be. We've done everything we really need to do, and I've gotten the Skull Lantern, which is what I wanted. What I'll be using it for, well, that's a little bit of a secret.